Oh wow, that's the end of it. It's so good. All the way to. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. For I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I just have my little yummy Philly swirl ice treat. That's good. Wait a second. What am I wearing? Oh, wait a second. You know what this shirt means? It's a special day. It must be. Well, it actually. Well, it was Labor Day. I actually had off. I didn't have to go to work. It's the first day I've had off since July 3rd. Um, I've been working kind of every day since then. I think my next day off, I have no idea. So I had to enjoy it. I went fishing, caught my one little fish, tossed it back. It wasn't worth keeping. Well, actually, I used it as bait. I'll be honest, I sacrificed it. But that's okay. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed their Labor Day. Yeah, and I put a little Daytona Beach Bum Fight League special out there. And actually, I'm kind of building the Havoc of Halloween card. I'm not here to talk about that, though. But first, because it is Labor Day, a little tribute. Because it is Labor Day. Probably for, I'm trying to think, let me take a look at old other calendar somewhere else, but no, not that, Patriot Day, yeah, don't do much for that, although you know what, maybe at Patriot Day, I'll make that video showing the inner workings of NASCAR, a little special treat, maybe, oh wait, that's coming up. Maybe I'll put that up. Yeah, I'll make that Wednesday or Thursday or something. So maybe Friday will be a double thing. That's okay by me. Um, also, thank you, Sonny Bono. Uh, unfortunately, you lost somehow Enzo Mori beat you in a ladder match. I'm not good at ladder matches. I don't know why I do them. Mm -hmm. But again, you made a really good showing for yourself, though. And again, if you want to be like Sonny Bimbo or even Nolo King, we had someone new show up in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League recently, Nolo King. He talked to me enough. I can take his name off the list of people I have to create. Nolo King, he talked to me enough. And he got his little own character in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. You, too, can get your own character in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. You can hit me up either via comment. Um, I seldom check my email, but when I do, I take a whole bunch of notes about people. You get, if I see your name enough, you get sent to the league. Find me in Discord over at uh, WooTube at Tamiya.com. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Again, and you could be there. Check out my show. Chat with me, too, when I do my live stream events. I know a little bit of the schedule for this week. Um, this will be going up, making this Monday night. So this will probably be going up Tuesday morning-ish. Yeah, it is going up Tuesday morning, what am I saying? Um, Tuesday I do live stream, so catch me over there on YouTube about 8 o'clock for some impact wrestling. Um, Wednesday I do my AEW review, 
Yeah, some shows are just easy, easier to review, especially AEW. Thursday, I'm off. Although, I, yeah, I'm off. Um, Friday, because it is Patriot Day. Again, you'll, you'll see this amazing t-shirt come out. And I'll be doing a double show that day, so that won't be too bad. Um, sometime in the morning, I'll post the inner workings of NASCAR. Followed by, I think there was some fireworks at the end, too. And then that night's going to be smack SmackDown. And then I'm off Saturday and Sunday. I'm doing this. I just have to go to work. That's okay by me. A little bit more money than coffee for me. Whittling down the one debt. Building up my IRA account. Saving money for my boat. I get boat. I get to leave job. So that will be good. And I can tranquilo. Finally, 30 miles offshore. As I'm probably getting an engine to work. That's a whole other issue. And that's a whole future issue too. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw. Actually a good show. Only thing disappointing, I don't think they had a tribute for Labor Day. They just kind of went right into the show. We got my little tribute on. I do what I can. Um, so it's off. Let's talk about, again, the show. I'm here. You guys probably hear too many people ramble on. Especially ever since coronavirus, everyone's been becoming a YouTuber <laughs> like me. Well, actually, I've been here. Actually, it's going to be weird. It's like two and a half years. That's impressive. And then for three years, oh, I don't know. I got the workings. Maybe I'll give you a tour. Did I give you the tour of the Hobo Studios? I'll have to give a tour, of, or I'll have to somehow get a tour of the Hobo Studios. Yeah, also known as my house. So, yep, maybe I'll do that. Quick little tour. Hobo Studios, you can see, you can see where the hobo cat lies and the rest pose and, and all the other wild critters around my house. But again, let's talk about the wild critters of Monday Night Raw. <sighs> Only bad thing about the show, a lot of recaps. A lot of recaps and rematches and things that don't make sense. But, but we'll get to that, though. We start off with a Randy Orton uh, recap. Uh, Drew McIntyre comes down, beats him up, claimers him. Yep, that sounds about right. Then our first match of the night, we have Apollo Crews, Ricochet, and Cedric Alexander taking on the Hurt Business. Uh, Crews goes right after Bobby Lashley because, remember, Bobby Lashley took that belt from him. Um, all of a sudden, because Bobby Lashley getting beat up a little bit, but then once the tide turns slash, he's like, I'm not having any more of this nonsense. Shirt comes off. He gets serious. You always know it's going to be a popcorn match whenever the wrestler leaves their shirt on. You know, they're like, yeah, whatever. But no, once well, it gets serious, of course, once they take their shirts off, Charles Benjamin um, comes in. Again, has a great... Charles Benjamin has amazing knees. He starts throwing those knees. MVP gets in. It's a high boot. And then he goes from arm bar and then the, the joint manipulation of the fingers. Spreading the fingers out so much. Ah, uh, not so much the card cutting, but just the stretch of the fingers. And then the great German suplex. German suplex used to be a finisher at one time. Used to be amazing. Um... Well, actually, gets back in. Uh, who is it? Cruz again. He's, he's getting beat up throughout this match. And Cedric! Oh, what did Cedric do? He turned on Ricochet. He pulled Ricochet from the ring. Threw him into the barricade. He incapacitated Ricochet. Came in. Um, lung blower. Oh, lumbar check. No. That's close. They, they all look the same. They all kind of... Sorry about that. Have the same effect. Is that weird? I hate that thing. It's just annoying. Yeah, lumbar check onto Cruz. Wow. Cedric turned in the Hurt Business win. They're giving them some more to do instead of just, just randomly beat up people. That's good to see. It's a good, solid 
cheeseburger match. Then we have the Street Profits taking on Angel Garza and Andrade. Andrade and um, Angel Garza comes out first. Andrade and Selena Vega. He comes out without the Bachelorette. Maybe she finally got a rose. Who knows? Um, Andrade comes out with Selena Vega. They're both kind of upset with him. Um, and actually, to start this match, it was shocking because normally Angel Garza leaves his pants on. This time, proper pants tear off, thrown right into the face of. Montez Ford. Yeah. I just got the two of them confused. Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. I think Dawkins is a bigger one. Ford's a smaller flying guy. Um, Andrade reluctantly gets tagged in. Um, starts strong with Garza. He does hit the double knees. Ford, however, it's like... Andrade was like just purely distracted. Angelo Dawkins hit something on him. Tags in Montez Ford. Ford, that frog splash. Normally you jump like from here and you just go down here. He like jumps up and then goes down. That's impressive. Street Profits pick up a victory. And it was short. It does tell the story. They're teasing that breakup between Angel Garza and Andrade. And who knows Selena Vega. It was okay. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. They come out. They start drawing. Start start drawing with Street Profits. Street Prof. Street Profits drops some like STD joke. Whoa! I do like the edginess of it, but I don't know. Saying you've been with so many partners that you better get checked for an STD. Whoa! I don't think that's TV PG. But of course it's PG-13 nowadays. Um, R-Truth is, I guess, in one of the suites at the Amway Center where the other wrestlers' family can, like, eat because he's there with some imaginary woman and his belt. I don't know. But the ninjas show up. The one ninja has his head in the dessert tray. Tozawa just like shows up and how does he want to say, ah, not happening. And then, of course, Our Truth, another funny line says, Yeah, this place won't get mentioned on diners, drives, and dives if, if you have ninjas running around. That was funny. And then we have Peyton Rice versus Billy Kay. Peyton Rice was in her old ring gear. Billy Kay's in her new ring gear. Uh, I'm kind of torn about it. Peyton Royce's ring gear, it looks like Peyton Royce. Billy Kay had on some gold ensemble. It, how do I say this? It just doesn't look right on women with that skin tone, mainly because it looks like they're naked. Billy Kay naked is a good thing, although you could see her black sports bra underneath. Uh, we'll get to that later. Billy Kay that looks amazing. She, she had, Billy Kay looks like she's actually thinner, too. And trust me, nothing was wrong with Billy Kay to begin with. I think I miss Billy Kay's blue velour outfit and her little, like, shimmery cape. That looked cool. This new she has, like, on, like, a semi-French maid's skirt. Sexy and hot, but... I don't know. It's just weird. Again, it could be different. Maybe I just like that blue velour and the cape that I'm used to seeing her in. Who knows? I, I might not even mention it next week because I'll say, oh, I just saw that stuff. So. Like if she went back to that, again, in that blue velour, she looked amazing. Um, Peyton Royce looks amazing. Again, I'm sure Sean Spears has his threesome. With, oh, wait, I, I won't talk about that. But um, so very classics. It's a headlock. Take down to the head scissors. Peyton Royce did that to Billy Kay. Then, of course, Billy Kay does a headlock takedown to head scissors onto Peyton Royce. So, again, they, the way they start the match off is very typical of what you think about when you see two wrestlers who are a tag team know each other so well. 
They have the the, the mirror move set, which is pretty good. I will tell you what, Peyton Royce and her long legs, she has some amazing kicks. And then just says, well, before that, they start to like slap each other and those like, yeah, a uh, little pushing and shoving. Little becomes very unsportsmanlike very quickly. Um, Peyton Royce had a big spinning kick. Uh, then the knees to the back. Um, and again, this is my one criticism of, of all these wrestlers now. They're all playing the million dollar dream. The Katahajine, the Taz Mission, whatever you want to call it. That should be really saved as a finisher. The fact that they're using it as a wrestle irks me. Again, this might be old guy, old Tom speaking, but always if I say next time I say old Tom, I'll play this music. So I find it on my cell phone. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was such a protected finisher. Only like Hulk Hogan, select few like super people ever got out of that. Um, again, nostalgia is that one thing. I just don't like it being tossed around. It should be a finisher. Well, Billy Kay got out of that. Created a Mexican arm drag on her part. Um, she does that that judo throw. I know how she does it. It's an arm over, like toss judo. Th it, it, it looks like um, a Georgian throw technique. Because it's like an arm. I'll have to watch it again, but it, it, it does look like some like legit judo throw. Which is really good to see. Whenever I see judo jujitsu in a wrestling match, it does add did I scratch that? Shoot. some credibility to that match. It's really good. And then there's a neck breaker done by Peyton Royce, and that was it. That was kind of sad. Peyton Royce wins. Again, a good match. Again, it teases the friendship they have. It's uh, the breakup. Cheeseburger match. Then there's a Seth and Mysterio family recap. Yeah, they, they did that too long. Um, the Mysterio family. I didn't realize that Ray Mysterio is actually shorter than Charlie. And then Murphy's on the uh, Big Tron. But we have more women. Oh, we have Asuka. The Empress of Tomorrow who looks utterly amazing. I'm just kind of warming up to her um, boob window shirt. And Mickey James. Mickey James is the original MILF. Taking on Lana and Natalia. Lana looks, well, Lana's okay. Natalia just to me is Kmart mom. I don't know what it is. It might be her her voice, her inflection. I don't know what it is. Again, this match starts off kind of very typical. Mickey James is in there. There's Natalia headlock into the head scissors. Classic stuff, though, and I don't mind that. Um, Mickey, Mickey's a hass is so amazing. Um, yeah, I just put down Mickey's ass again. That was so good. Um, from there, Natalia tags in Solana, the Luthes press. Uh, Maddie then double teams a little bit. Delivers a basement dropkick when Mickey James gets up. It is good to see some tag team continuity between Lana and Natalia. These two probably have great chemistry. I know to some degree Natalia trained Lana a little bit. There's the infamous part of Till Divas where Lana throws a shot put, I think, through the window of Natalia's car, which is just hilarious because her father, uh, may he rest in peace, Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Him was helping her train, giving her like strength techniques, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> oh yeah, it was just those those cameramen. They showed us Mickey 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 James as a hat again. Kevin Dunn, Huser, M Mickey James. By the way, bottoms did not do her any help because again, that skin tone looks makes things look. Extra revealing. Um, again, Mickey James is the original MILF. Original wrestling MILF. 
So terrible am I. Um, Natalia then mocks Mickey James a little bit. He does a roll up. Lana does the X Factor face buster, which is pretty cool. Uh, Natalia. Oh, I know what it was. Yeah. Oscar got in the ring. And Mickey James just slaps her right in the ass. I wish I could tag Mickey James like that. Right in the booty. I wish I could tag Oscar like that. But as we saw from AEW, no fans are allowed to touch people. Because when John Moxley came out of the crowd, someone wanted to give him a high five and security quickly dispatched of that. Uh, that's a whole other issue. But yeah. Because then uh, Mickey James goes to the top rope. <laughs> and then Oscar just spanks her right in the ass for the tag. Hey, you can tag me like that. I can tag you like that. Um, so Lana gets stuck in the Oscar lock. Uh, on the outside, Natty eats a mick kick. Lana eventually has to top out. To the Ocelot, which is the cross face chicken win. Although a lot looser than Bob Backlund used to put on. It's another good match. Again, it leads up to a little tension between Oscar the champion and future challenger Mickey James, Lana, and Natalia. They're just, they're just there for jobber fodder. This is a good cheeseburger match. Then there's a hurt business. Um, going to the MVP lounge. Eventually, they start talking to Cedric, Ale Cedric Alexander. He accepts his T-shirt. That means he is now an official member of the Hurt Business. Um, but then the Viking Raiders show up, crash the MVP lounge, along with Paul Cruz and Ricochet. And it's a brawl. And you know what happens? Holla, holla, player. We're going to have an eight-man tag match um, to sell this. So it's the Hurt Business versus the Viking Raiders. Ricochet and Apollo Crews. Crews and Ricochet. Again, I'll tell you what, they're, they're tandem chain double double team moves. Oh, they're so good. I can't believe they're holding King Ricochet back into the WWE style. He has, and I call him King Ricochet because at one time he was King, Rich, Rick, King Ricochet when he was in New Japan Pro Wrestling, also known as Prince Puma, when he was in Lucha Underground. And he did so much. It uh, watching Lucha Underground more so than WWE brought me back to watching pro wrestling. So I'm like, wow, because for a while WWE, WWE got boring. You could predict things so much simpler. You could call the five moves of Doom every time. Um, just things like that. So like, okay, I can just oh my god, oh, uh, yeah, that's about right. Yep, he wins. Good. Um, do I have to watch the next match? Lucha Underground made me excited. I'm like, oh, this feels like the way ECW used to be before it got like all super, super violent. Like every so often in ECW, again, you have the Malenko Guerrero Classics, uh, Sabu versus Rob Van Dam, which is totally amazing. Every so for a while, only every so often would they throw in something crazy. Like they had the Ian and Axel Rotten. Um, Death Grudge match. Um, but then, like, two years, then they would wait two years to do something like crazy until, like, New Jack showed up and started, like, killing people and stabbing people and busting people open all the time. Uh, it got, I don't know if it desensitized, but it's like, okay, well, New Jack's going to bust this guy open again. It's going to be a bloody mess. Yeah. Um, but they had some really classic matches. Again, every so often they do something really crazy, and then it just went over the top, and I'm like, no, ECW is gone. Again, the barbed wire match between Terry Funk and Sabu was utterly amazing, and so you could literally see the, the, the humorous bone and the underlying muscle in Sabu's arm. And I met Sabu once. That arm's all kinds of messed up, man. I don't know how, how it stays in one piece, but that's a whole other issue. So with this, I was going off of, yeah, because of Ricochet. He's so good, and yet so underutilized in the WWE. 
Uh, MVP eventually gets in. He gets beat up by the Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders, again, they double team a lot on MVP. Cruz gets stuck in the wrong corner again. Then yeah, he escapes. He escapes the Dominator, tags in Eric. Eric gets beat up a little bit. Shelton did with three big body slams. Um, then Cedric and Ricochet get in the ring. They just start going to it. So they're like, okay, you screwed me. I'm going to get you now. It's like, yeah, let's fight. Um, Ricochet again. He did a Snapdragon suplex. All good. And it became Spot Fast Mania. Just like in every eight man tag, everyone has to have their finisher in the middle of the ring, roll out, and, and go for dives. Uh, Ricochet then misses the 6.30. And it seemed like he almost went into business for himself. Because Ricochet, either that or or Eric did do some like stupid dive. My land is funny. Like, out of the corner, like he might have heard someone say X. X. Dreaded X. Yeah, see what this means. Wrestler legitimately hurt. Um, and the ref said, okay, we're ending this. It's like, I'm taking it home. Because Ricochet got hit with a Michinoku driver. And very easily could tell the two count. Two. Sweet. He lifted his shoulder up. However, the ref counted three. One of two things. Either Ricochet didn't forgot that he was getting pinned by that. Um, Ivar was hurt. Legitimately, they had to stop the match. Or Ricochet just said, screw this. I'm, I'm going into business for myself. I'm tired of eating these pins. Because the Hurt Business wins again. There we go. I hit my 27 minute mark. Hey, free software. Uh, so Randy Orton take, took on Keith Lee in a rematch. Ooh, I gotta start getting wrapping. I gotta start bringing it home soon. Um, Orton, he, all he does is roll out. He's like, ah, oh, my jaw. Too many claymores. Again, he did that twice. Eventually, he did catch Keith. He did catch Keith Lee because Keith Lee grabbed him by the ear. That looked painful. Like poor Andy Orton's e ears and jaws. He's gonna go home. They're gonna look at some funny purple color. Uh, Keith Lee grabs him by the ears, picks him up by it. However, Randy Orton is a smart heel. He then hangs up Keith Lee on the top rope. Um, Orton gets back in. Big tie up. Orton's smart enough. Uh, thumb to, straight thumb to the eye. The referee doesn't watch. Uh, Keith Lee had no RKO. Too big. Kept his base in the good low center of gravity. Did not allow Randy Orton to get his full extension on it. It's a eats a big elbow. Um, Lee then gets nailed by something. And then a whole bunch of classic orange stomps. It's a kick out with authority. He did the um, Keith Lee did the kind of bench press kick out. So Orton kind of jumped along. That was really good. Again, splashes Orton twice in the corner. Um, it's a tour of the islands body slam. You know what it is? That means you just swing the guy around and body slam him. Yeah, you like go like literally around the, around the world. Then jerk back. Go around. Jerk back, then pow power slam him that way. Uh, Jeff Cobb does that really good. However, it was a spirit bomb turned into an RKO, but no. Keith Lee gets a protected loss because true McIntyre comes in. Claymore's Randy Orton again. That's twice he's been Claymore. Randy Orton wins. Good match. It's going to lead up to Clash of Champions. It still protects Keith Lee. Cheeseburger match. Okay, then we have the first of two handicap matches. Um, Shanna Baser takes on Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot. Um, the Riot Squad's back together. And it's very good because now they have matching gear. Ruby Riot was in that yellow and black checkerboard, um, sports bra, and like half leg pant. And then Liv Morgan had on the yellow checkerboard sports bra and her, like, like, um, how how do I call them? It's, it's like her black 
I'll just call them her black granny panties. Her black, her black pleather granny panties. Only way I can describe that, folks. I'm sorry. I don't know what they're called. They, they almost look like, I mean, like 1970s shorts that like women used to wear that like came like right up the thigh. I remember it because oh, what movie was what were they famous in? Young Blood. That's it. The woman that housed all the hockey players who, who who had the sex with all of them. Yeah, she would just like have her ass cheeks exposed, show off her hockey cards while like like give her hockey cards to some guy and like she would strip. Yeah. That's a woman. Um so Liv Morgan has those on. So it's good to see them. Matching outfits. Uh, Shayna just picks up poor Liv Morgan. I don't even know. It was some botchy thing. Um, then she starts literally doing a standing Kimura. I mean, if she wanted to, she could have ripped Liv Morgan's or uh, Ruby Riot's arm right out of her socket. Um, Ruby, however, a little too quick for uh, Liv tagged in a blind tag. For Ruby Riot, um, Shannon gets distracted. She hit a nasty looking gut buster. That was pretty cool. On to Liv. She gets distracted, however, because Nia Jax is yapping to her. Oh, you're making this look too simple. This is like too complex. It should have been over already. Shannon's like, shut up. Can't you see I'm like working here? And then Liv just rolls her up. And people are like, huh? So the Riot Squad. Of Liv Morgan, Ruby to Riot pick up one victory and Shannon Baszler. It was an okay match. Hey, I'm a sandwich of a match. Then we got a Raw Underground where it's Kevin Owens versus Aleister Black, and this actually goes on for a while. This was actually probably the best, most realistic Raw Underground, with the exception of the ending. Um, so I'll go over it quickly again. Uh, they start off, they just sprawl, a lot of strikes. A lot of legit MMA holds. Uh, Kevin Owens, um, next time we come back, Kevin Owens is stuck in a heel hook attempt. Um, Aleister Black, again, goes, goes for the arms. Um, uh, Black, again, he goes into his full MMA gear, or full MMA training is great. KO, uh, Throwing leg click leg kicks, and it's great to see Alistair Black check them, which is which is good to see, which you don't really see a lot in wrestling. Uh, and Kevin Owens hit the Canadian headbutt, which I think in my rating scale is like the fourth most effective headbutt. Scottish Samoan, um, Australian, and then Canadian, and fourth most effective headbutt ever. Then they go fighting the crowd a little bit. Uh, Shane McMahon says, no, get him back in. Then they go, then they get tossed out. And then they get tossed right into Baba Tunde. Baba Tunde is not having any of this. He's king of the underground. Baby! Baba Tunde is up there. Somewhere. Let's see here. Oh, I see it! Second one from the bottom. Let's see if I can point to it. Let's see here. I'm gonna go. Whoop! There and right there is his name, Bobby Tunde's name. Probably never get those ever again, not for a long time. So it's good that I have those up there. Good souvenirs and free souvenirs are best souvenirs. Bobby Tunde says, screw this. You, you got into me. Dex Kevin Owens throws him out, tosses Alistair Black. Bobby Tunde stands tall. It was enjoyable though. It had length, it had legit MMA moves. Um, MMA matches either are really short or really quick. Is that that really quick feeling? It looked like a legit MMA fight, which is what I like minus the head, but and of course fighting on the outside. But this is pro wrestling. It's a theater of the absurd. You do have to suspend some disbelief. Again, really good though. I'll give this whole Raw Underground segment a cheeseburger rating. So they're figuring out how to do Raw Underground. Then uh, we cut back to the ring. Uh, so now it's Nia Jax versus the Riot Squad. And I swear, 
You know what? Ruby Riot has to pants to go a little bit higher because I can see the top of her of her fishnet pantyhose and a little bit of her thong. I'm not complaining though. And Ruby Riot, Heidi Lovelace kind of turned me off when, when she said, "Oh no, Heidi Lovelace is my cousin." Don't lie to me. I know exactly who you are. Just just embrace it. Say, "Wow, you remember that? Awesome." Give me a high five. Let me stare at, at, at your booty a little bit, and I'm happy. Because, yes, she, Matt Cross gets to stare at her booty a lot. But Oh, well. Again, hey, Liv, I'm single. <laughs> Say, hey, Mickey James, I'm single, too. Actually, you know what? No, uh, Shannon Baszler. Shannon Baszler, you know what? You're close to my age. Look me up next time you're in Daytona Beach. Um, where was I? I just broke my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Nia Jax is in. Um, Nia would swing. She would miss all the time because very simply, Liv would just stuck. Liv's like about a good six inches shorter than Nia anyway. Um, and eventually, I don't know, the lights went out. And you hear Dio's voice, and you see uh, Dijakovic in the background because he's the tallest, white, big white guy there. So Retribution, Retribution gives it a manifesto. They, they kind of spoiled this whole match. This section, at least, Repri at least Retribution got their manifesto in and saying why they're doing stuff. The match itself didn't do anything, though. It's a can of soup. Then you have the whole Mysterio family being interviewed by Sarah Schreiber. And then we get to the main event of the evening, finally. Good, because I need to bring this video home. Well, actually, they have uh, Randy Orton. Well, right before the main event, they have Randy Orton. Uh, he's walking through the building, all beat up looking, tries to get interviewed. And <laughs> Drew McIntyre nails him again. He's, like, stuck his ear into the turnbuckle bolt and, like, raked his head against it. You know, that turnbuckle bolt... A lot of people say the apron is the hardest part of the ring. Uh -uh. The two hard, the two truly hardest parts of the ring is the ring post, because normally that's metal. Some places are cheap places they might have wood, but for the most part, in any legitimate organization, it's metal. And that turnbuckle bolt, that's not plastic. That's like airplane-grade metal, because that's meant to take a lot of stress and not break and to hold. Yeah, it does loosen up a little bit, but that's, like, it's heat-treated steel. It's Tugson Chromium Blend Steel heat-treated for hardness and everything. That, my friends, is the hardest part of the ring. Um, then he gets Claymore for his efforts. So three Claymore's heats. Next time you see him, he's out in the ambulance. Then we have Murphy. Murphy versus Dominic Mysterio. Dominic's outfit looks absolutely terrible. Um, it's probably not color safe for TV. I did like his previous outfit from his wrestling shows. It looks it looks better. Like this made him look like a kid at like Halloween. And it's, even though I know Hobby Lobby has Christmas stuff, it's way too early for that. Like I'm just waiting 22 more days before I start my. My 31 days of Halloween songs. Yeah, so it's actually in, I have to find the pumpkin. Because it's up in that closet that gets plugged in like forever. At night, I guess have my pumpkin in the window. So that's pretty cool. Um, so with this match, Murph, Murphy versus Dominic. Murphy, again, goes after, goes after Dominic quick with a quick knees. Uh, sends Dominic to the table. However, Dominic quickly recovers. Sends then Murphy in the table. Murphy, you need to know the rule of tables. You get table out, you go through said table. Um, and then they go into the audience or the crowd. So that was pretty cool to see. They still do that. They still do those spots. Uh, Dominic had a big splash off the screens. Some guys probably saying, oh, what's he doing? I can't see anything. Oh! So there's his body fly in front of him. That's pretty cool. Again, it gives it that authentic feel like there's actually a crowd there. Which is good. Then, again, no, 
Uh, Murphy tries to get shoved Dominic to the stairs with those family looking on. Um, Dominic gets stretched. The abdominal stretch. He tried to reverse it. No, Murphy knows that. He took abdominal stretch 102, hosted by Lord Steven Regal. So he knew about that move. That counter. Instead, he gets hip toss over the ropes. And, yeah, that's the time he went through the table. Again, you set up the table. You go through the table. Um, and Dominic wound up getting tied up in the ropes for a little bit. So... Where's that? Where's that a table spot? Yeah, so Dominic gets tied up in the ropes. And Murphy goes to grab a kendo stick. Um, Ray's on the outside, throws throws the one kendo stick out. And I don't know why he didn't go for the other one. Because it was like right there, but instead he went for something underneath the ring because the table was already propped up. Um, then the mother and daughter undo Dominic, free him from the ropes, hits a sunset power bomb through the table. That was great. Murphy gets back in the ring. Dominic's in the ring. Big frog splash. And oh my! It's payback time. First, Dominic takes a kendo stick. Whap! Whap! To Dominic. Ray Mysterio comes in. Whap! Whap! <laughs> and then... <laughs> Angela, or Mrs. Mysterio, comes in. <laughs> so gingerly. She's like, I don't know how to swing this. She's like... Ugh. And the daughter comes in. Who looked even more awkward, like trying to swing. She's like, ah, 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 ah. Like, How do I do this without actually hurting this this poor man? Like that's the look Angela had. She's like, like the look Angela, um, uh, Miss Mysterio had was like, I really have to do this. <sighs> so that was great. And then of course they take the shirt off of Murphy, exposed bare flesh. This time, the, the mom and Don are finally, like, they just take turns. Dominic, Ray, Miss Mysterio, um, daughter, daughter Mysterio. And then we just rotate through. And then eventually, Murphy's like, I quit. Um, mate. So Murphy quits. Um, however, he gets released from the ropes. Dominic Mysterio wins. This is good. This tells a good story. This is actually a surf and turf match. And then the beating continues until they, like, oddly go off air, I guess, on a hard out. And that was Monday Night Raw. Overall, you know, it was a good cheeseburger of a show. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. The next, most part of the schedule, this is going up sometime in the morning. I have to do the editing processing of, of it now. Um, take a shower, take a nap. Um, so this will go up in the morning, Tuesday night. It's going to be live streaming Impact Wrestling Wednesday's AEW review. Thursday, I'm off. Friday's gonna be double video day because it's Patriot Day. It's gonna be a little bit.